Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take another look at the Windows Backup app in Windows 11 version 23H2. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The following show is brought to you through the generosity of people like you. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Therott. And this week, we're going to take another look at the Windows Backup app in Windows 11, which is a little confusing. And I think now I have some answers. <laughs> so um, we've discussed uh, the various backup and sync capabilities that are available in Windows 11. We've talked about some of the old school tools that are still in there, like file history and the legacy Windows Backup tool. Uh, these are things that are deprecated and are probably going to disappear in a future uh, version of Windows 11. Um, I think the legacy backup tool is just there so you can restore to an old backup that you created with that tool. I don't really think it's, I don't think Microsoft expects many people to actually use it to make backups today. Um, we also talked about all the newer solutions that exist in Windows today that address these concerns, right? The backup and restore concerns, right? Most of which are based in OneDrive, right? OneDrive does file sync, not backup, but similar. Um, it has that files on demand feature where you can go into a folder, double click a, um, uh, a file that is stored in the cloud. You can see it in the file system. It's not really there. If you're online, it will download and you can view it. From then on, it will be available on the computer. You can arbitrarily select any amount of files and folders. And same thing, keep on this device. That will sync, keep them synced to the device. This is called Files on Demand. Uh, we have talked about folder backup, that uh, controversial <laughs> OneDrive uh, feature, at least to me, where by default, what Microsoft wants to do is back up your documents, I should say, sync your documents, pictures, and desktop folders to OneDrive so that these things are always in sync across your devices. Honestly, it's a good feature for most people. Um, there are versioning capabilities uh, built in. This is what takes the place of file history, right? So um, I have not edited any of the files on this computer, but um, if I had, for example, you would see a list of all of the different saves of this thing, the different versions of this file I can restore for many of those versions. If I make a mistake, you know, we've all done this control S, close the app. Oh, crap. I, you know, I meant to do something else. I lost stuff, but you can get it back. Right. And so that's, that's really neat functionality. Um, there's also a recycle bin feature for OneDrive that is up in the cloud. That's not in windows, but you can go to onedrive.com and access things that you have tossed away. Right. You want to get those things back. Um, so you can do that. So that's cool. But there is now a new tool in Windows 11 version 23H2 called Windows Backup. And what's the deal with this? Um, so this simple looking app, after months of work with it, I have finally figured out, uh, is just a front end. Uh, it's, it's in many ways, it's not its own thing. Um, it, it really is just a front end to tools that exist elsewhere in Windows, uh, either in OneDrive or in the settings app, right? So you can't actually configure anything from this app by default. Although if you make a configuration change elsewhere, which I will show you, uh, then you'll have the chance to change it here. But basically what this thing is doing is just saying somewhere in Windows, we have made these configuration changes. And if you click back up now, it will back up to the cloud. And so there are the three folders from OneDrive, OneDrive folder backup, right? Three of the five, the three main folders. There's this semi new thing called apps. This is kind of interesting because this this is new. In fact, to this, uh, it actually debuted in 22H2. But within the past year, Windows has added the ability that if you pin apps you download from the store, they can't be from the web, unfortunately, um, to your start menu or taskbar, it will remember that. And when you restore later, either because you bought a new computer or reset the computer or whatever it might be, you're signing into your Microsoft account for the first time. At some point, uh, soon after you hit the desktop, it will start downloading those apps from the Microsoft store and it will pin them back where they were. That's actually kind of a, a neat little new feature. Only works for some of your apps, obviously, but still pretty good. Um, settings. Uh, settings Sync is a feature that debuted in Windows 8. 
Uh, it got a little worse in Windows 10, meaning they took away some features. Um, it got a little worse again in Windows 11, meaning that they took away uh, some more settings that you could sync. Uh, one of the ones I happen to know about is the ability to sync your desktop wallpaper, which is, I think, the one most people don't understand. Why would that be gone? And I found out from a PC maker what had happened was they had a big corporate customer who had switched over uh, you know, tens of thousands of users from one PC maker to them. Uh, they restored, you know, their from their backups, and what came up was the uh, wallpaper that had the logo of the other company on it. And they, you know, rang up Microsoft and said, "Stop doing this immediately." And so now Microsoft doesn't sync uh, desktop wallpaper. So that's something you'll have to do on your own. But there's a subset of um, settings you can sync. It's not particularly granular. There's not a lot you can do in there. But that's unfortunately what you get. And then credentials, which is kind of a screwy um, combination of two different things. Um, it's going to sync the accounts that you've signed into on the computer, meaning uh, not just your login account, obviously, that's part of, that's the Microsoft account you uh, sign in with, but also uh, email and app accounts, right? So if you're um, signing into some of your apps with different accounts, it will save that stuff, all your Wi-Fi networks. Uh, and then if you're using a Microsoft account to store um, your passwords through uh, Microsoft Edge, for example, uh, those are all saved to your Microsoft account as well. So... It's just a front end, right? It, you click back up. It actually takes an incredibly long time. I'm not going to do that today because I've done it recently and it's horribly slow and I don't want to bog this thing down too far. But the the thing we should look at next, honestly, is like, where does this come up again? Like, where, like why are we doing this? Um, and you might imagine that somebody, again, has sold their computer or is selling their computer or has bought a new computer and will sell this computer, right? Or has for whatever reason, decided I need to reset this computer. And now you're you're coming up into Windows again for the first time on a new or the same computer. And you, what you run, what's called the uh, Windows Setup Out-of-Box Experience. And after you sign in to your Microsoft account, which you basically have to, the first thing you see is this. And I apologize for the low resolution nature of the screenshot. This is a, um, you know, it's taken in a virtual machine. It's kind of hard to take these shots otherwise. So, this is, again, a very simple interface. It has the same four items in it, folders, apps, settings, and credentials. Um, it, it has chosen a computer, which is kind of a confusing. This part is confusing to me. I don't know how it chose this computer. Um, the computer I am I ran this on was not a laptop, <laughs> for starters. Um, so I don't know why I chose one of my laptops. Also, at the time of the screenshot, this was not the newest backup. So it's doing some kind of sensing of what you have and your hardware. And it's thinking, well, maybe this is the one you want. Um, if it isn't the one you want, you can click more options. And it will go to this screen. And this screen has a list of all of the um, PC backups you've made in the past. Uh, these actually date back a couple of years. <laughs> so uh, despite the fact that Windows Backup is a relatively new tool, this capability has actually been silently working in the background of Windows 11 for about a year and a half, I guess, or almost two years. Um, if you want to do a clean install, meaning you don't back up or restore from a backup, just click set up as new PC. But this raises a question because I said that all of these settings, with the exception Nope, that's not true. All of these settings are stored in your Microsoft account. So if you don't restore from a backup, you're still going to have folder backup configured for you and your files are still going to be OneDrive, right? That's not going to change. Uh, all of these settings are still associated with your Microsoft account. That's not going to change. So even restoring from backup, not restoring from backup doesn't change anything. All your credentials, your accounts, your Wi-Fi networks, etc. It's all there. There's nothing you can do to change that. The only one that's different is this, uh, the quickly access apps on my Windows device. If you do a backup and then restore, and you had apps that you downloaded from the Microsoft Store, not from the web, but from the Microsoft Store, to your taskbar or to the start menu, it will in time download those apps from the store for you and then put the shortcuts where you had them before. That's actually kind of a neat little feature. So I think a lot of people will, will think, well, I need to back up before I you know, go to the new computer. And they'll see this feature and they'll back up and, and that maybe is what they want. Um, but the the confusing part here is, well, where do you where do you manage this thing? I mean, it's close the app, but there's no there's no settings button here, right? There's no click, you know, click here to do anything other than back it up. And it's hidden, but it's in the settings app. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a very non-standard Windows way to do things. But if you go into accounts and scroll down you will see a Windows backup option. And here you will see roughly the same exact options. There's three instead of four, but that's because two of them are mixed in here. And I actually was screwing around with this earlier. So um, one of these was uh, unchecked, but normally these things are all checked, right? And so 
OneDrive folder syncing, click that, it brings up the OneDrive interface. Not, you know, it's not a separate interface. You literally go to OneDrive. Remember your apps is that new feature, right? So if this is on, you'll have that shortcut auto download from the store feature. That's nice. And then you can go in here and choose which of these you may or may not want if you want to. I don't, most people would never customize this. There's only five choices, but this one option that I had unchecked, accounts, Wi-Fi networks, and passwords, maps to the credentials option that was in Windows Backup. The other four are what was in settings, right? So this time I'm going to do something a little different. I will turn off personalization, right? And close this. And now when I go to backup, and this is the this is very, very confusing. Um, I don't know why that, <laughs> this is such a strange little graphical glitch. Remember that all these things are just front ends, right? You can't really click, you can't really do anything in here. But because I changed the setting, now you can see that setting is something I can configure. I turn this off, but this setting is now on. It, but it does give me the option to go in here and say, actually, I do want that off, right? So Microsoft is always trying to do everything. They want to do the whole backup. Um, I configured it in settings to not do the whole backup. I can come in here and I have to do it again. So this is the thing you really have to know. If you, if you actually want to configure this, I don't think most people would. But if you do, you can't just do it in settings. You have to then go back to backup. Because if I didn't expand that and just clicked backup, it would back up that feature. And then when I went to settings later, you'd see that setting slider was on. And that's not great, um, but that's the way it works. So uh, we'll see what happens in the future. I think this app is going to get better in the future, frankly. Um, I've already loaded this page in the web browser, but if you go to the Microsoft account website, which is account.microsoft.com, and click on devices here at the top, you'll get your devices view. This is all of the computers you've ever signed into with this account. And there's a couple of little management things related to Windows Backup that you can do from this page and only from this page. Um, one is that you can remove a device. So in that scenario where you've uh, bought a new computer, you wiped out the old computer, you sold it or gave it away, you want to remove it from your account. So you can click Remove Device. And if you go through with this, which I went through here just in case it takes a long time, this will also remove the backup from your list of choices. So when you go to restore to a new computer, it's not going to be there anymore, right? So um, you're not saving any space. Uh, this stuff does not take up any space in your Microsoft account, but it is in there. Um, it will just make the list, you know, any list you see, the devices list or the restore list a little cleaner. So you could do that. But there is one really strange option related to this way down here at the bottom. It's called Cloud Synced Settings. It says Windows devices may back up your app list and some settings, goofy, in the cloud for easy syncing across devices. And there's a cleared stored settings button or uh, link. When you click that, you'll find that you can clear the stored settings, what we would call backed up settings, I guess, uh, for all of the devices in that list, right? Not It will actually reach into every backup that you have and pull out some of the settings, not all of them. <laughs> so it's, it's very strange. So known Wi-Fi networks, which is part of credentials, language preferences, which is one of the four setting uh, main setting list items and app list, which is that those apps that download from the store and then they put the shortcuts back. That's it. So <laughs> you can't choose one or two of these. You have to have all three. You can't choose to do this only for one or more backups. It's for all of your backups. It's literally going to strip out parts of all your backups. Very strange. Um, why they're not all there, why you can't configure this in way in any way. I, I have no answer for that. Um, I have to guess, and I am guessing, that Microsoft is going to improve this product. Make, I, I, To me, improving it means make it truly granular, put all of the settings in one place, put all the options in one place, um, respect the choices you made, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, and maybe uh, add back some traditional, uh, you know, backup restore functionality, right? Not just certain things. Uh, figure out a way to actually back up all your apps, you know, do it. it doesn't have to be a system image backup like we used to have with the old backup tool, but some form of more sophisticated backup, right? The stuff that we need for that to work is all in Windows today. Uh, Microsoft just has to put it together. So I would take, I would just watch this area. I think Windows backup today is is still pretty interesting and, and you need to know about it, especially if you're going to configure it. Um, but I think it's something that's going to get better over time. So I hope you found this useful and interesting. Uh, we have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more about the podcast and all the episodes we've recorded so far at twit.tv slash H-O-W. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support if you're club trope member especially uh we really appreciate it so thanks so much i'll see you next week